now I'm really second guessing all my decisions that I made. Like the background, I'm like, this was stupid. I thought it wasn't a choice. Right, exactly. Hey, welcome. And congratulations, Grace and Julia, um, on your nomination. Thank you so much for having us. We are very surprised and excited to be included. Yes, a huge honor. So we're, we're happy to be here. Are you really that surprised? I mean, your show is fantastic. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's really incredible, the, this exploration into like the intersection of faith and um, some of the more, I guess, controversial tenets of the United States. I mean, I wanted, I know we were joking around a little bit and really, I, I truly do love the effort you put into your background, Grace. Thank you. Although I don't really see much space on your mantle for a trophy, but I'll 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 find okay. the room. Listen, no, you want to jinx it? I get it. If we win, I'll I'll clear all this up. You know, I just I just wanted to throw this on this old thing. Um, you had you had in laws visiting, you know. Yes, exactly. You know how it is. It could be um, the and, topper instead of a star or an angel. Mm -hmm. a um, so can you just tell me a little bit, Grace, um, about just your, the impetus for State of Grace and, and that show? I mean, it's so compelling and it's so amazing, but I'd love to hear it from you. Just Yeah, sure. Um, so out. this show started as sort of uh, my, me airing out my frustration to a friend of mine who at the time worked for Refinery29, and I mm -hmm. had come up against a rejection in my own life for myself on the basis of that person's faith. And in just sort of airing this out, um, this conversation was just sort of like, wait, so this person's religion is informing them to reject you and I was like yeah and she was like well we should do a show about how religion impacts people's lives especially in American life and the the different ways that that manifests itself you know when it comes to politics when it comes to your personal life um there, there's a, a wide a array of issues that we need to be talking about. You know, we talked about gun violence as well and how that intersects with religion. So it started as sort of a personal struggle for me that we were then able to just harness and turn into something that I think is really healing. And when I say that we're surprised to be nominated, it's that like when you say that you're hosting a documentary series about religion and faith, it's not really cool and sexy. People aren't like, oh yeah, for sure. I really want to tune into the religion show. But I think that we have to be honest about the fact that religion is makes up an, a, an entire voting block in this country. It mm -hmm. informs how a lot of people behave in this country. So we need to be addressing it. And I'm, I'm really proud of the way that our show has gone about that. Um, Julia produced two cycles and I'm, I'm working together was so much fun and so crazy and such an honor. But at the same time, you never think it's going to be popular enough for a streamy, if that makes sense. Like you look at the other list of the nominees and you're like, oh, Ants Canada, like for sure. Like may Justin Bieber, hell yeah. And then it's like state of great, all right, okay, faith, let's let's go there. And I'm so happy that people have resonated with our show and what we're talking about. Well, I think it was interesting because, you know, the official description is it's the intersection of human rights, sexuality and faith. And mm -hmm. I don't know how careful or conscious you were that decision of using the word faith as opposed to religion. Um, because I think that it has a lot to do with your own sort of personal conflict um, sort of evolving into your identity from when you were a kid. You, you, you mm -hmm. grew up in a rectory, right? Yeah, I did. My dad's a priest. And in Kentucky, right? My parents live in Kentucky now, but I grew up in Belgium. My dad is an Episcopal priest and he had yeah. A church in Waterloo, Belgium. But I mean, it, when you talk about faith, I mean, that really has, that's, that's more than, um, it's such a more personal term than like religion, which is, is a group that you belong to. And we can understand how that's can be easily politicized. But mm. for you, I think like a through line through the whole documentary was um, this conflict of faith or understanding what your identity is and how to resolve two things that are not necessarily opposites, but are pre sort of presented that way yeah. in society, right? Like, um, they're not opposites and they're not opposition. I mean, they're oppositional, but they're definitely not opposites. And I just, I'm just fascinated about how, as much as this is about characterizing, you know, a paradigm in mm -hmm. contemporary United States culture, it's also, it was very personal for you, I think. In, for in, sure. 
in that. Yeah, and, and I think that what we wanted to do was just to, to open up this conversation about faith and what that looks like to people, people of, of a certain faith, people of no faith at all, people of a faith that is outside of my own understanding, and just sort of take away the stigma of like the things that you're never supposed to talk about, our politics and religion, and mm. let's break that down. Let's 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 talk with people about what they believe, what informs their belief. How do they learn about that? Had you ever had that belief taken from you and you reclaimed it or taken from you and you it didn't serve you anymore? And I think that these were conversations that were, were kind of only happen, happening within religious circles, but I think it's a universal experience. We all have to go through that that feeling of like, okay, what do I stand for? Where do I root my morals and my values? For a lot of people, that's faith. And let's talk about that and let's deal with that. And what are the implications and the consequences of when that does become politicized? You know, when being a queer Christian is like a sort of like, people are like, you know, slamming on the brakes. Like, what do you mean you're a queer Christian? Like, let's just Wait, roll is that an oxymoron? Like, yes, that, yeah. exactly. And let's talk with other people who for their own reasons are oxymorons in their own way, because we all know that we're many, we're a multitude within us, within ourselves. We contain so many different uh, patterns and beliefs and structures. And I think that for some reason, we just didn't want to touch faith. And that's what State of Grace seeks to do is like, no, let's, let's engage with the, this intersection in the space of faith and let's like not make it so hyper religious and let's uh you know let's just kind of go there i guess it did feel like you kind of picked like the hottest um topics of conflict guaranteed to ruin a thanksgiving dinner right it's sort of like sexuality mm. religion because i mean i don't i don't ever really kind of say a prayer before um dinner but somehow it's obligatory during thanksgiving uh you know it's, it's sort of yeah it's sort of like you got to smash that all together and it's it's always those those things and we didn't really get that this year with thanksgiving right so like yeah. me watching this i was like i got this cathartic experience to um, yeah, you know, talk about all these things that we know are these explosive um topics that uh that ha happen around thanksgiving and, and kind of reaffirm you know whatever your positions are you know in the world yeah, just Julia, send, a, send an episode of State of Grace to a family member that you want to have a difficult conversation with and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know, but the way you approach it, it's, it's very accessible. And, and like, you, you're not, uh, I don't find you to be very combative in, in, in the way that you approach this. You really, it's about, a, it's about understanding. I think, Julia, it, what, what attracted you to, to participate in this project, I think probably has to do with this approach of like, what's the deal with this? What's the deal with under God in the Pledge of Allegiance? What's the deal with in God we trust on all of our coins? Like, I thought there was the separation of church and state. I don't see that happening. What, tell me a little bit about what attracted you to this project, Julia. It's so funny because what you just said is like the conversation that Grace and I had when <laughs> we were like developing that episode specifically. I was like, wait a second, there's all these things going on in Kentucky, which is where we went for that episode that I was like, I had no idea this was legal. I had no idea this was happening. Um, like what, what does in God we trust mean? Is it, is it the Christian God? Is it a metaphorical God? People have different thoughts on that. Um, I was so excited and it really was like such a joy to be able to work on this show just because it's a rare type of show where we, uh, I mean, Grace is not combative. She's going in to to build bridges, to find, I, let me tell I've, <laughs> I'm behind the camera and I'm seeing Grace find common ground where you just would have never imagined. Um, whether it's that she and who we're speaking with watch the same HBO show um, or whether it's they like grew up with some of the same traditions. Um, I think it's such a rare opportunity to be a part of something where we're not going in looking for conflict and drama. We're really mm -hmm. looking um, for understanding and to build relationships and maybe help our viewers see that, oh, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be combative. It, do, it doesn't have to be painful. We can heal a little bit. I think yeah. that's great. 
I think that, you know, a lot of times when people make a decision or they sort of state their faith, we've sort of decided societally, at least within this country, that it's beyond reproach. If you just say, that's what I believe, that's my faith, then you're like, okay, well, it looks like no further questions. Let's just mm -hmm. move on. What our show tries to do is let's ask those further questions. It doesn't necessarily need to lead to an argument, but you should be able to explain your foundation in faith. And or in no faith or whatever it may be, that shouldn't be off limits. And I think that that's sort of a uh, sort of like a taboo that we've all just sort of come to decide is okay. And that's what I love about our show is just challenging the fact that we can have really hard conversations about the great beyond and about the divine and things that seem so impossible and mysterious and walk away. Um, you know, maybe we didn't agree. We can like, we can walk away and be like, Ooh, whatever you just said was absolutely not cool with me, but we can at least understand each other. And I think that it was specifically within faith, that's something that we really have looked to do and that hopefully we can continue to do. I think that finding common ground is, it, it's becoming more and more rare, uh, especially because it, it's division just drives so much more attention right? Like, uh, it's like teams playing against each other, especially if they're, you know, really good matchup. Um, we see that in politics, we see that in, in the way people identify this polarization is, is really difficult. You, you think that like a global pandemic mm. uh, would bring people together um, in, in a way that, you know, sort of regard, you know, disregards borders even. And yet we see it as a hugely divisive topic, especially in our country, because We've been trained to be divided and, you know, define our own identity in response to the other, right? And I think that that's just um, the work like what you're doing really has helped, like you said, build some common ground and we can like sort of reclaim our humanity um, as a people that have so much in common, pursuing happiness, you know, feeling secure, um, it, it's, it's just interesting that we're kind of in this stasis of perpetual conflict and emergency. And I mm -hmm. think that, um, I have to commend you for taking a very measured approach to some very, very controversial topics and, and really trusting the viewer to come along with you and help, you know, learn with an open mind and maybe change the way you think and look at things. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry that you can't be part of the streaming awards in person. We, we can't, um, you know, this year, but was there anyone that you would have been excited, uh, fellow nominees to have bumped into on the red carpet or, or seen at the after party or in the ballroom? I, yeah. I mean, you want to go, Julia? <laughs> I do, because I know. Uh, Jackie Ina is my everything. And <laughs> I was like, doing my makeup, I'm like, make Jackie proud. I'm sure I didn't, but still. I love her so much. Thank you. I would have loved to see her. So virtually, hello, Jackie. <laughs> so I understand Katya is hosting, right? Uh, yeah, Trixie and Katya are hosting. Trixie and Katya are, okay. So I, lo I love Trixie. Katya, my wife and I, we actually met Katya at a streamies two years ago or something. And it's kind of been like the most starstruck that we've like Ben, um, so I think it would have been very cool to see her again. She was just so she's like your hall pass, basically. Well, actually, she's like my wife's hall pass. I, which is which is you know, there's a we could get into that as well. It's questions abound, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure my wife is truly in love, like hall pass love with Katya, and I respect that because ship that game totally. respects game. You know, like I see what she's doing. That is not something I can offer to my wife. So Katya. Um, <laughs> I truly no, I don't. I, look, hey, look, I get it, right? We, you know, we said like wear something festive and fun for the red carpet, and your idea of that was a black. T Absolutely. So it would make sense that my wife would be like, Katya is not that. Um, That's yes. the polar opposite. Yes, yes, yes. yes they're yes. they're they're so great. Um, this year we're doing it um, not in a ballroom. It's on a party bus that travels around Los Angeles. It's really fun. They're they're great hosts in that. They're so incredibly approachable. And it kind of reminds me of, of the kind of work that you do is that on first glance, it's like, whoa, two drag queens, like that, where are we going with this? Am mm -hmm. I going to feel alienated? Mm -hmm. But they invite you in. They're so compelling that they're like your best buds. And you really do feel watching this show that you are literally 
friends yeah. with them. And that's, that's, I mean, that's why they do so incredibly well and why, you know, they're nominated for show of the year. Uh, mm-hmm. It's because I don't know how they do it. They put out so much content and they're just, yeah. they're just a fountain of invention, right? So we, we love them. They're, the um, they're a great duo. And oh yeah, that's one question I wanted to ask is Julia and Grace, how do you know one each other? How did, how did you get connected? I love this question. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know you go. <laughs> well, it's a long and winding road because we actually did go to college together. Um, and we were like, sort of concentric circles so we knew each other but we weren't super close um there's like a picture of us at a party in a in like a pantry together it's really closeted in the fo- i know what you're talking about now it's all coming back to me yeah i was like were you, were you, you would, like in a ball gown or an apron you would think that i was in drag let's put it that way i was like what photo is she ta-? i was like oh that photo i live marge simpson kind of thing going on I wish no not that cool we're talking like pumpkin spice basic you know type of and I was also wasted out of my mind anyway go on Julia (laughs) but we were in a pumpkin spice environment so we can't fault you for that but um and you know we we both live in LA so we would bump into each other um and I was like I mean I was like stalking Grace a little bit I was like we're gonna be friends you're gonna be we're gonna be good friends but then like truly by happenstance um I, I started working at Refinery29 and was put on this show. Um, and like we, if we weren't bonded before, we are <laughs> bonded now. <laughs> because did you recognize one another or how did you discover? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, we do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we, we definitely, it was like, oh cool, I'm working with Julia, but I don't think that you know, especially for a show where you're in the field and you're traveling so much, like you don't know how much you're gonna know someone. Yeah. <laughs> like Julia truly like lived at my house at this point like we've just I would say that aside from my wife the most like the greatest volume of time like condensed volume of time I've spent with someone is sweet sweet Julia Boyd like it's not not my parents like there's no one it's it's you I love you <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that you guys sorry, you guys I hate that phrase I'm sorry that you all can't be together um and, and, and celebrate this moment uh, being nominated. But congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Is there anything you wanna say to one another now that you're in the privacy of an internet video? Mm. Oh my gosh. I do have one thing I'd like to add cause it's kind of my, my little, uh, my thing now that I'm, I'm embarking on on TikTok a little bit. I would just urge you if you happen to be a celebrity that has stumbled upon this video and you are attending a mega church with like a major celebrity pastor, just ask really specific questions on inclusion, specifically LGBT inclusion because they oftentimes like to make you think people are welcome and they don't. It's like a smoke and mirrors thing and perhaps there'll be more in-depth stuff about this on a future State of Grace episode but if you don't want to find out then um, just ask them now. So thank you. That's that's something very close to my heart. I would also love to add again in case anyone's watching this that we have had so many amazing people like each person that comes on the show I think really shapes the show um and it's it's like such a privilege to be able to to be somewhat of the vessel for those stories um like grace and i are both so thankful to everyone who chooses to share um especially mm-hmm. topics that can be difficult or can put you in a bit of a vulnerable situation it, it's such an honor and i think like the show really is um comes to life because of those people who have chosen to share with us um and I love working with Grace. It's truly so fun. I feel bad for people who don't laugh as much at work as we do. So it's, it's great. Well, congratulations again. Yeah. Love you, Amir. Congrats. Bye, everybody. Right. Love you, Julia. Bye, Drew. Bye. Bye.